And there's a very famous concept um, in, I guess it's in, in the persuasion field called the Overton window. Yeah. Uh, which which you're probably familiar with, but the Overton window basically says, you know, you take a range of views on any topic at all, you know, but to, to say it's a policy topic, um, all the way from, you know, guns should be banned and never exist on the planet anymore ever, even in military situations, all the way through to guns should be, you know, readily available in cereal boxes for young people. You know, that somewhere between those two really extreme positions is this position that the bulk of people find palatable. And I think a lot of times what happens with some of the creative people that you point out in the book is they happen to just be in that sweet spot of that Overton window at the moment it kind of opens. But I want to throw some biology in. I wrote this book against the backdrop of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I want it to the point about um, the relationship between idea environment and environment. I would like to point out that um, COVID presented a fascinating opportunity for me and insight because it is fairly a brilliant creation mm. and it tells us a lot about creativity. So what is creativity? Well, creativity is something novel that has an impact. The impact can be very modest. Um, it need not be profound, pronounced, well-known, I will go so far as to say when you walk into the kitchen as a parent and you've got three ingredients in the fridge and hungry children and you combine those ingredients in a way you are unfamiliar with or has never happened before and suddenly honey, mustard, spicy, salty chicken happens and your kids eat it, you have created something. And that, that can go all the way up to the extreme end where a creation has a, is very profound and has immunotherapy. Uh, James Allison, who won the Nobel, is a character in, in my book, and he's doing a wonder to create cancer. Bono, whose music um, you know from U2, is a character. Um, there are billionaires in this book whose, whose technologies um, you know, made a major impact. Their work, like COVID, was a combination of a novel thought and the environment it fell into. And so let me use COVID as this example, because it tells us something, a bunch of things about creativity. And among them, it tells us that creativity is neither good nor bad. And that is something vital to, to, to recognize in this conversation. It is not moral or amoral. Its impact is, is, in fact, highly unpredictable. So look, COVID, we call it the novel coronavirus. It is novel in a bunch of different ways, but the way I like to think about it, it was novel for our immune system. Mm -hmm. It was close enough to what came before to catch on among human beings, but different enough to flummox and and, and create some challenges for our immune system. And it happened to come at a time when we could travel widely, when um, an, a global economy allowed movement, allowed the exchange of biological information. And so the novelty of its biology combined with the environment that it happened to set in on caused this thing to become a mass market hit, if you will. Oh, I, I'm not, I'm, I know that sounds funny, but it's really instructive as to the nuance. It was a very familiar virus to our bodies as a coronavirus, but it was very novel in that it challenged us in new ways. Mm -hmm. And it's spread because of the nature of the modern world. That is the very definition of how a creation that might otherwise be small gets huge. Mm 